would have been an A7 show. Um, and I think the lineup was like Heart Attack, Kraut, and The Mob. You know, it's the, the three bands that really come to... And, it, and I, was, I was an outsider looking in still at that point in time, and it, I was just blown away. Giving, giving people haircuts in the bathroom at A7, bringing bring my, bring my, my, my clipper. I used to carry a little knapsack around with me and I carried clippers in it. And the goal would be to get these guys, like these kids that were there for the first time with long hair, and we'd say, hey dude, come on, I'm just gonna take a little bit off, and I'd shave them fucking bald. You know, I must have done it to about 15 <laughs> kids. And they'd be like, oh my God! You know, like we'd take them into the bathroom, and we didn't hold them down or anything like that, but it was literally, we talked them into it, you know. I'm like, no, we're not going to cut it real. Recruiting I'm not going to be like, converse. yeah, yeah, recruiting converse. You know, it's like I came in with, you know, hair, I, I came and there I left, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> There's a couple good, I'm going to say John Watson. John Watson, I bet you he's like high on the list with everybody. <laughs> John, John Watson. What, what, else, who, what else can I say? I mean, there's a lot of guys had some pretty good style, you know, but John Watson was John Watson. Were the Bad Brains as great as legend has it? Better. Uh, uh, the Bad Brains were the epitome of, I think, what we were all trying to be. You know, here, take, put it into context a little bit. These guys were probably a good five or six years older, if not even a little bit more than all of us. Uh, they had been together as a band through a couple of, of, of incarnations. I think that they'd, they'd evolved as a band already, and they were all fantastic musicians. So now you take all this together, uh, and they were just, you know, they were musically tight. Their, their stuff was, was, was well written from, from a music standpoint, um, and they were just, they were tight, man. They were, they, they were on. Point. So when we were 15 year old kids and we were working our, our band, our, the, I'm just going to give you the abuse, for instance, we saw those guys and I'm like, I, you know, I don't want to sound like them. I want to sound like me, but I want to get up there and I want to have the impact that they're having. I want to have, I want to be up there and I want to be as tight as these guys. I want these guys sound like their freaking record when they're playing live. I want to sound that way. You know, it was just, they were on point and HR had, uh, and, and they weren't like, they were a little bit different, you know, uh, th than like the straight hardcore bands, but Pay to Come was probably one of the first hardcore songs I ever listened to, and I was just, and I heard it on a jukebox on, in a bar on, on Avenue A, the, or, you know, and it was just like, like wow. <laughs> There was a lot of really great shows, but, but it's probably going to come down to more, uh, probably the first time I saw the Bad Brains at, at Irving Plaza because I'd been to some, a few hardcore shows at that time. Never, they weren't doing shows at CB's yet, really. There was never in a venue of that stature had I seen a show and it was, and it was, and it was packed and, and they just blew us away. So a lot of it, not to say that there weren't some really great shows afterwards, but I, I was already had a taste of greatness. Uh, if you understand what I'm saying, you know, because the CV's venue was great, but you know, I mean, there was some great shows I saw with Minor Threat and, and SSD Control and, and you know, I got, I mean, Suicidal Tendencies, all, you know, all these bands, but that was such an influential show on me that I was just like, uh, it was just awesome. And, and a lot of stuff happened though that night too. I got, it was in the middle of winter, it was a February show. It was the show I first started, we first started handing out my coming soon flyer for the abuse. I was out there like handing flyers out. But I had my leather jacket, which wasn't drug for youth yet. It was, it was still, said Rude Boys for the Clash on it. And I had a Dead Kennedys thing I painted on the sleeve and it got stolen. That, that, that night from the, sh from the show. So I walked home and it was like 20 degrees out w in a t-shirt with no jacket. And you know, so that's another thing that, and you know, I was soaking wet because of s the sweating and stuff like that. But it was, uh, it, it was, uh, that was, I can't remember who they played with. I mean, there was a pretty good lineup, but, but uh, it, was, it was an awesome, awesome show. 
pretty much I, I was at any show because I was in walk within walking distance. You know, there might have, there were shows that I might have missed because I couldn't get a ride to where the show was or like, uh, but, but no, nah, I, I don't have any regrets about shows that I missed. There's pro probably more regrets about maybe like having not had opportunity to play shows with certain bands. You, you, you know, like I would have been great if we could have done that or, or having had opportunities to play certain venues ourselves with, with, with my own band. Is, is hardcore dead. I don't think something like that ever dies. I think it just evolves um, and maybe its meaning changes. So is the hardcore that, or, or what I would view as hardcore, if I saw, let's just put it to you this way. If, if, if you brought what people are saying is hardcore now to me in 1981, would I recognize it as hardcore? Maybe not. You, you know, but it doesn't mean that it's dead. It just means that it's, that it, that it, that it's evolved. So, uh, for some people, they think, hey, is, if it's not, if it doesn't meet the cr criteria of what I considered hardcore when I was hardcore, it doesn't exist anymore. And that's not the, ca that's not the case. Like you say, it's the, it's the lexicon. It's just, hey, we, we, we were the kindling, you know, and then everybody's going to throw a log on the fire, you know, and, and hardcore as a genre may be dead, but it, but it will never die because it has, it, it, it had, it's, it had children. You, you know, there's all this influence you, you influence in, in other forms of music uh you go you can't go to any regular show now and not have a mosh pit keep a positive attitude don't let other people get you down I, you know i try to instill this in my own in my own kids you know they get negative maybe somebody's picking on them at school or, or whatever's happening and i tell them like like dude you, you know you're great, you know, why, why are you gonna let somebody else bring you down to, 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 to their level? Just, you know, you don't have to be, hey, everybody is special, but nobody's special, right? You, you know, don't, don't, just be who you are. Be comfortable, be, hey, nobody's perfect either. Don't, don't, don't try to be perfect at, at anything. I'm not, you know, just gotta, 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 gotta love yourself. He's probably the first person that I ever heard say like, what the fuck, you know? <laughs> so it'd be more of a WTF moment, you, you know? So kind of every time I, I, I write WTF or, or I hear what the fuck, I kind of picture Vinny. <laughs> uh, I, I'm going to go... I'm gonna go with Frenchie. Definitely, the funniest guy to me was 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 Fr Frenchie was Frenchie was a lot of fun. He was he was a he was a good soul. That kid, you, you know, as uh, um, you know, he stayed at my house many times when he didn't have a place to stay. And I just remember sitting around my my dad. You know, my dad was home from from you know, so they had a sit down dinner. Friend, you know, my family always had a, had an open door policy. Like anybody was welcome. No questions asked. Any, like if there were kids that ran away from home, even from my older sister, they were welcome to stay at our house, you know, have a safe haven, a safe place to stay. Um, but so like it was nothing new to them to have like a bunch of smelly punk rock kids sit, sitting around the table. But, but Frenchie's sitting there and we're, we're, uh, we're, we're, we're eating dinner. And then all of a sudden he's like starts to like choke and he <laughs> hits himself in the chest and he goes Pah! and he spits out coins. And he goes, oh, sorry, just had to cough up some change. <laughs> I was just like...